All right, so they give us a parameterized curve right here, and they say that it represents the position of a projectile that's fired with an initial velocity v at an angle a above the horizontal. Let's check out the first question. If a gun is fired with a equals 30 degrees and v equals 500 meters per second, then when will the bullet hit the ground? What we need to realize is that when the bullet hits the ground is when y equals zero. Obviously, the bullet at t equals zero is going to start at the ground, but then the bullet's going to go up and it's going to come back down and at some time that bullet is going to come back to the ground we need to find that time so I'm going to plug in V equals 500 and a equals 30 we're gonna go with G equals 9.8 and again we're going to determine when this Y value here equals zero let's simplify sine of 30 degrees is one half so this turns into 250 T minus 4.9 T squared to solve this equation it's probably easiest to factor we can take a T out and now we have two factors multiplied together that are set equal to zero. That means that we can split this problem into its two factors. This first factor here is going to give us t equals zero as a solution. We knew that. We knew that the bullet started on the ground. So that's not the result that we're looking for. This factor here gives us 250 minus 4.9t equals zero. We can solve that equation by subtracting 250 and then dividing by 4.9. I don't know how many decimal places we need here. So if you want to be safe with this problem, you should probably just enter 250 divided by 4.9. That does turn out to be a little bit more than 51 seconds, 51.02 seconds. I'll write out a few decimal places. And all right, for the next part of this problem, the question is, under these conditions, how far from the gun will the bullet hit the ground? So what we have to realize is that our bullet starts here, it goes up and it comes back down, and then it hits the ground over here, 51.020408 seconds later. So this distance here is what we're looking for. This distance here can be given by the x value at time equals 51.02 and so on seconds. So all we need to do to get this answer is we need to plug in v equals 500, a equals 30, and t equals 51.0204 and so on. If we do that, I'm getting approximately 22,092.4848 meters from where we started. All right, so I'm going to box that up and move on to the next one. Now, in this problem, they're asking us what is the maximum height reached by the bullet? As you might imagine, there are several ways to do this. One would involve taking a derivative of y and setting that equal to zero. But you know what? If we realize that the path of this bullet is parabolic, then we realize that the maximum value of our height is going to be achieved halfway between leaving the ground and coming back and touching the ground. That is going to happen at half of the time that we entered for our answer in part A. So I'm going to take our answer for part A and divide it by 2. And the time that we're looking for is 25.5 and so on. That is when the bullet hits its maximum height. If we want to actually find the maximum height, we're going to have to plug that time in to find Y. So I think that I can squeeze that in down here. Plugging all of that into my calculator is giving me an answer of 3188.7755 meters. Again, I'm not sure how many decimal places we need. If you find that you need a lot of decimal places in your answers, you definitely want to make sure that you don't round your decimals too early. That can cause errors in your calculation later. Okay, let's move on into the last part of this problem, which asks us to show that this parameterized curve is actually a parabola. We're going to do that by eliminating the parameter t. So what I'm going to do to eliminate this t is I'm going to solve this equation right here for t. Then what I'm going to do with that t is I'm going to plug it into this equation for y. It's going to look a little bit messy, but let's do it. All right, you can hit pause in your browser if you want to take a little closer look at what just happened there. But I'm going to need to scroll down for a little bit more writing space. I'm going to notice that these v's cancel in the first term. And if we take sine of a and divide it by cosine of a, that's going to give us the tangent of a. In the second term, I'm going to copy down the 1 half and the g. And I'm going to notice that if we square this v times cosine of a, what we get in the denominator is v squared times cosine squared of a. And when we square x, we get x squared. Now, why did I group all of those terms together? Well, all of those numbers are just parameters. They're just constants. Once our bullet is fired, we know that v is fixed and we know that a is fixed. So all of these values here and here are all just constants once that bullet is fired. The equation that we're left with then is just a parabola. We have y equals some constant times x minus some constant times x squared. That gives us a parabola that opens downward just like that. So this equation up here is the final answer that we're looking for 
to enter into this box above. Notice that they don't want us to substitute in g equals 9.8. They want us to answer this question just like this. So okay, I hope that that helps you out. Let's take a look at another problem in the next video.